1670s, when the French wanted to proclaim the sovereignty of the King of France over these territories, Jesuit interpreters did the translating and the interpreting. And they had a great big powwow with many native tribes, and they all sang and swore along with the king, and French flags were unfurled and crosses were planted and everything. The French were convinced that according to the law of nations and according to international law and so forth, they had just been establishing their sovereignty and the native people had accepted it. The native people understood that they were getting a very powerful ally who was going to defend them. The idea of absolute ownership, individual ownership, was just totally absent in, in any of the Indian societies. That was a strictly a European concept. The explorers were trying to find passage through the mountains to the Pacific Ocean, and the pagans found them. They were starving. They were freezing. So the pagans brought them in and helped them survive that winter, showed them how to live off the land, how, what kind of animals to eat, what kind of plants for medicine, uh, kept them warm, helped them on uh, clothing and how to build shelter. The importance of maps, the Indians drew their maps in terms of days travel. And, and how long it took to get to a place. And, uh, and at the time of the year, you can expect the ice to form. And it was on the basis of those maps that the Europeans finally penetrated the country and reached the Pacific Ocean. Essentially, it's a, it's a cooperative relationship because the, the aboriginals are now able to procure items that are going to make their lives a little less time consuming. The native's knowledge of the land, the, the, the canoe routes and where to go, and, uh, and also the, their abilities as, as guides and interpreters. All of those help to, to create a, a mutually beneficial relationship. The native qualities of hospitality and generosity were uh, values that were prized. The native medicines, uh, the herbs, the ointments, and so forth, came to be appreciated by the French doctors. They wrote back to France about these medications that they were learning about. The Indians had well-functioning societies, that their societies functioned. The fact that the societies functioned is proven by the fact that the Indians were there when the Europeans arrived. The first occupants of the land are the natural owners of that land. It's very clearly, unequivocally, included in, in Justinian's Code, which was compiled in the 6th century and was the functioning international principles of, of Europe. It was a principle in Roman law. In fact, the Romans thought it was so obvious that they didn't, it was, well, if you could prove that you were a first owner, that ended the argument, if you were a first, a first inhabitant of a land. So how did they get around it? How did the Europeans get around that? Human, human in form only. You see that expression in, in some of the early writings, that they were human in form only, and therefore didn't have the same rights as real humans, which the Europeans were. <laughs> so the, the first official modification you get was that um, in 1537, the Pope issued a bull, a sublimus deus, in which he said that the Indians were human beings and they had full right to their freedom and to their property as any other human being. And, uh, but in spite of that proclamation, general politics of the day 
didn't accord the Indians the, the full rights, considered them to be subhuman, and very quickly the, uh, the Indians got classed as uh, savages. This set a pattern, and once you get a pattern established, it's God's own job to get it changed. And so the idea of Indians, say, for instance, being savages and uncivilized pervaded right until the present day.